Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Carmine Sabia for Explain America and another disaster has befallen Alvin Bragg, the politically motivated prosecutor who's persecuting former President Donald Trump. Just my opinion, guys. Before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Those little things really help us out and they help our channel continue to grow. Alvin Bragg has had a habit of bringing witnesses on the stand that are doing more damage to his case than they are to Trump. In fact, they're assisting Trump. And what the people on Fox News were absolutely stunned by was how tragic this particular witness was for the prosecution. And this is Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal's former attorney. And they said under questioning, the defense absolutely annihilated this guy, totally rocked his world. Not a great day for Alvin Bragg, not a great day for Michael Cohen, not a great day for Stormy Daniels or anybody else who's trying to harm President Trump. No, this, this was a very rough day for those people. I want you to watch this analysis because these are experts and I'm not. So I want you to watch them talk about it and let me know what you think. As always, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm Carmine Sabia for Explain America. We love you guys. God bless you. Take care, everybody. Welcome back to our breaking news coverage of Donald Trump's unprecedented hush money criminal trial in New York. I'm Wolf Blitzer in the nation's capital. Aaron Burnett is just outside the court in New York. We are tracking minute by minute updates as Trump's defense attorney just finished cross examining a key lawyer talking about Keith Davidson. He represented both Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal, who were both paid to keep quiet about alleged affairs with Trump. Aaron. And uh, the prosecution requested a five minute break here to decide whether they're going to try to do redirect uh, examination. And Davidson's testimony so far, some really crucial moments, both on direct and in these recent moments in cross. He says these deals were crafted in the weeks before the 2016 election. And he said that he never had any interaction with Trump directly. So, uh, Phil Mattingly and Paula Reed are back with me. So, Paula, uh, as I said, they just asked for a five minute break. And you said this is a five minute break where uh, you sit down and go, OMG, we need to clean up on aisle five. Yeah, they do. I mean, this was incredibly effective cross-examination, largely because the prosecution did not themselves bring up a lot of Davidson's other dealings, deals that he brokered from clients, uh, for clients who got money from, for example, Charlie Sheen, or going to try to get money from Hulk Hogan in exchange for a sex tape, something where some of his interactions were monitored by the authorities. They did incredibly damaging things that raised questions about whether Davidson was indeed in the business of extortion. Interesting. Trump, uh, so they're back in, Keith Davidson's back on the stand. Um, this is big. But Trump glanced at the Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg as he walked in. So this, he hasn't been in yet, has he? He wasn't is, there the other day when I was there. You're exactly right. So this is fascinating, the Alvin Bragg of it all. This is the district attorney uh, who, who oversees this case, but he has taken a very low profile here. When we had the civil case just a few blocks away, the attorney general of the state of New York, Letitia James, she talked to the microphones every single day, often responded to Trump on social media. Alvin Bragg is deliberately taking an extremely different approach. He is not often in the court. You never hear from him. Even in his few media appearances, he has not answered questions recently about this case. So the fact that he's in court today, that's really interesting, especially because they just they got killed on cross. So this is fascinating. Yeah, but they get killed. So it means, is it, he's not <laughs> far away. Maybe he was in that room waiting and saying, I'm going to oversee the cleanup.